So welcome back. Um, sorry for some interruption with the internet. I think uh, somehow, sometimes it is working quite well and sometimes it's not working that well. So, but there's not much I can do. I refresh the screen and um, shut it down and turn it on again. Um, so we, will, we hope that this will be fine. It will go okay. So, as we, maybe some of your first time here, so what we have been doing is we, this is the cycle of teaching. On, uh, we are uh, talking on uh, five, um, five wisdom. And uh, so we have uh, so far finished with the uh, uh, wisdom of emptiness and uh, mirror-like wisdom and then this is today we are uh, talking on wisdom of equanimity so i wanted to just quickly read these lines from uh which i did last time also and sometime it's kind of reminder for all of you and also a reminder for myself these five wisdom from this great text Simjimwotsamachiamadupe Okay, so these are like a, um, basically um, five very simple, short description about five wisdom from the Shangju uh, from the one of the Ben uh, Zhongxian texts from Shangju uh, Nianju. So and uh, so basically, I will just repeat the first two mirror and then we'll go into the third. So the first one it says. Uh, our mind that in, there is no, nothing inherently uh, exists, nothing inherently out there. Um, so uh, it is basically uh, empty. That that empty is uh, awareness of that emptiness is the wisdom of emptiness. So, which is very simple way to understand that will be. We have a perception of our self, the ego, Dangzi, self-grasping mind. The self-grasping mind, what it, the self that it grasps, which doesn't really does not exist, when you realize non-existence of that self which is projected, that you are, then you, be, you become free from that ego because of the power of that awareness, power of awareness of wisdom of emptiness. So that's what... It's, it is referring to, and the second one, mirror-like wisdom, is referring to not only the, it's empty, but that it is also clear. So clear part, uh, presence part, the awareness part, recognition of presence part, awareness part, clear part. We say salwa, it's the um, luminosity part. A recognition of that luminosity part, it's what is... Uh, awareness of recognition of that luminosity or light or awareness is mirror-like wisdom, and uh, and then uh, the, the the today's wisdom what we were trying to we will be discussing is the uh, wisdom of equanimity. Wisdom of equanimity is what we will be discussing today. So so and wisdom of equanimity it says. Uh, Nyamla made so surchepe Rigpatang Tongbani Chuda Oma Oma Deba Shindo Ye Michebe Nyambani Ji She so Rigpa the awareness Tongpa that the that sacred space um, these the awareness and and that space cannot be separated when like you cannot separate when the mix uh, uh, when the water and mi milk is mixed, uh, you cannot separate. This is just a metaphor. 
as you cannot separate water and mi milk when they are mixed together. Same way, awareness and can, space cannot be separated. So, so inseparable, inseparable awareness or non-dual awareness, it, that is the wisdom of equanimity. So wisdom of equanimity is basically uh, equilibrium or equanimity is basically two things, which is the, um, the emptiness and clarity. So basically these two aspects, what is talking about. So now, of course, the, the, all the different texts and different version of different texts it explains it differently and is also corresponding emotion seems different sometimes. But here I am uh, pointing out according to like Ziji, uh, I said not the Zermig, so the pride, pride and uh, uh, is the uh, the emotion of wisdom of equanimity. And so it also says, Pyantamche salton yime nyambi dangni to never topi rigpa. So the awareness which realizes inseparable state of clarity and emptiness is the wisdom of equanimity. I know it, it's not saying much for some of you, those who are not familiar with these teaching the vocabulary. So maybe I will try to kind of explain that a little bit uh, in our, like some sense of ordinary sense of uh, uh, meaning of that. Um, so for example, you know, like sometimes very often uh, when uh, we, our sense of self, uh, sometimes for some people, like you become like a more like an eternalist, materialistic, or sometimes you become more uh, nihilist or or denial, uh, which is very natural characteristic of personalities that people we all we, you see around yourself all the time. And if you look at yourself, maybe either you are a little bit more fell into this eternal materialistic, or you are falling into more denial or nihilistic view. Uh, how you see yourself and how you interact with the world, how you uh, present yourself in the world or interact with the world, how you, what you contribute to the world. Um, so it has probably so much to do with how you see yourself and through that self, how you project out into the world with, on others. For example, um, so sometime, um, like in the particular, like in the, in the West, you know, the culture is very much like an individualistic culture, as we can all see very much. Um, everybody need uh, your own space, your own private space, and uh, you're feeling lonely, but you still, you need your room, and you go and you want to, you need only your chair, and you need to go your time, time for yourself. So very much like sense of individualistic. And also very much, sometimes we take everything very much personal personal, that's some sense of I, I, and like people can be very, how you say, very kind of negative also. Sometimes they see only the negative things. They're always critical and judgmental. And, uh, and they have amazing thing is sometimes people seems like I have so much time to judge other people and criticize other people and they don't have a time to look at their goodness, their potentiality, they're manifesting their goodness in the world, they make something happen for the world and for themselves and their family, but they have a lot of time to judge and criticize other people. So much time, it's ama amazing. And um, so also sometimes we can be very, uh, how you say, exclusive, so like very much like, a. Uh, excluding uh, different other religion, excluding other genders, colors, uh, economic status, social status, um, unfamiliar situations, uh, so that basically that sense of self can be either, what I'm trying to say here is sense of self either can be very much like empowered, like through material and power 
external situations or it can be very much denial situation where where you are uh, you are like a, i don't know uh, feeling no one feeling lost feeling um people ex feeling that people exclude you feeling that people criticize you feeling that people don't love you feeling that people are talking about you and some sense of that sense of self is so weak so lost so non-existence and and that is like a really much falling into the emptiness in a very negative way that you really some sense of non-existence uh, but the stronger sense of emptiness will be not being empty of that projection but full of that truth uh, uh, what we say true self um, true being uh, your presence your quality so for example you know or you can feel like a very much some 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 sense of self of boundless boundless self for example you could be feeling very open very uh, feeling very confidence feeling not being threat not being challenged even there is challenge an obstacle you feel they are like strengthening you they are um, showing you path they are becoming a friend they are becoming your resources you are they are becoming a cause your cause of development a cause of finding resources so you don't feel any outer situation is really if affecting that sense of self because that sense of self is full powerful perf perfection is there um, a sense of uh, self is very worthy for example worthiness because a, a feeling sense of self is worthiness is very important because any time you go out there in the world how you are going to look anything talk with anybody ask for anything even negotiate for something and even look for something you always look for look from the place of how you value yourself if you are value yourself higher then you look from higher place to the world and ask for the world and world is universe is prepared to give you a bigger gift because because you are ready to receive bigger gift but if you look at yourself very self selflessness in a very negative sense and emptiness sense a denial sense nihil kind of nihilism that sense of self then you you don't value yourself you you don't feel worth then you're not going to try to look for worthy thing or you're not going to ask for valuable things you're not going to you know even looking for job for better job or good job or something like that so it is really like some some sense seems like a very important how you feel sense of worthiness we sometime in the tibetan tradition we say ranglu uh, rinpoche so like this this body is precious this life is precious human life is precious human body is precious this is like a mandala of the divine um so it's some sense of very much valuing uh, and feeling very lucky and feel very full and because of that also feeling very confident so 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 that what i'm trying to say here is the relationship of when we for example when we talk wisdom of equanimity is realization or or the awareness of uh non non dual state of clarity and emptiness It's clarity and emptiness or space and awareness space and presence so that space and presence how that simply translated into our everyday life will be that really like the way you sense of self how you look at yourself for example if if somebody says uh, you are no one or a feeling i am no one i feel so free that i am no one or i feel so lost and fearful because i am i am no one because i i feel strong because i feel someone so sense of being someone is support for some people and sense of being 
no one, it's a liberation for another people. So that is like some sense of, like a, uh, we talk about emptiness and clarity, it's a very much it's some sense of uh, meanings are very much associated with that. So, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, if each one of us, if you look at this moment in our life, how you look at yourself, okay? So let's, let's uh, contemplate a little bit in this meditation. We don't have much time. So let's contemplate a little bit. Just sit comfortably. And uh, bring your full attention. Awareness inside this moment here and now You can, uh, if it's difficult to understand a feeling or perception of sense of self, then if then look at in a situation in the moment when you feel hurt, when you feel agitated, when you feel negativity, when you feel threat. I feel uneasy. I feel threat. I feel pain, I feel negativity, I feel challenge. I, 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 who is that I? Trying to see if you can recognize maybe that I, I has something to do with a profession. A lawyer is saying I, or a doctor is saying I, or nurse is saying I, or businessman is saying I, or father is saying I, mother is saying I, the husband, wife is saying I, Brother and sister is saying I, a friend is saying I. Who is that I connected with the what? You can clearly see that identity is connected with some role. I. And that role is maybe how you identify yourself, that, that's how you feel your worthiness. That, that role is what you exist for. So therefore, if without that role, you don't probably, you feel you will not exist, you, will, you are not worthy, you are no one, that will be very scary. So I have to keep defending, be that one, recognize that. But you can clearly see that sense of self is very limited and, but even though it's still feeling protected and some feeling some value, but it's a very vulnerable, limited. So maybe just, just for the sake of fun, just let's keep on saying I am not a teacher. I, I'm talking to myself, but you can, everybody can say whatever you identify as something temporarily. I am not a teacher. I am not a husband. I am not a father. I am not this, not that. Or I am not only a father. I'm not only a mother. I'm not only a teacher and I do have tendency to identify with one stronger, therefore that stronger identity becomes an obstacle in my growth, in my development, in my accomplishment. Recognize those.
So let's just feel I am not only that. Keep on saying that I am not only that. That that means this is like a wisdom of emptiness or empty experiences of emptiness, emptiness of self and self's projected sense of I. So I am not this, I am not that. Just keep continuing. So maybe eventually say, I am no one. I am no one. Observe how you feel. Is it scary? Is it threatening? I am, or is it, is it liberating? I am no one. I am not that who has a lot of problem. I am not that situation which has a lot of conflict. I am none of that. Now you can say, I am everyone. I am potentiality. I am infinite possibility. I am Hindu, spontaneous perfection. I am effortless manifestation of enlightened activity. So wisdom of equanimity is equanimity between these two. Being no one, that is the space, being everything or infinite possibility, that is the awareness. So emptiness and inseparable state of emptiness and awareness. And experientially, that is how one might see or one might try to feel, at least that's, that is what is happening in this moment to me um, in this meditation. That's my expression of what in separate, uh, wisdom of equanimity means in experience. That's something that we can understand, something on a personal level. Some, some of this understanding might shift our personality, transcend some of our pain, discover some of our qualities. I am no one and I am infinite possibility. There is no contradiction. I am no one. I am infinite possibility. I am, I am not only the one who, ha who, who is having all these problems at work. I am not only the one, this person who is in relationship with someone. I am not only the one who is facing challenges with the health. I am infinite possibility. So I am free from all this single limited identity. I am free from that. So, as I'm guiding, it's very important that each one of us will look at ourself rather than trying to constantly, you know, turning the thoughts, finding a ways to judge. Does this wisdom of equanimity mean anything to me, to you, now? As in Shangyu description, Rigpa and Tongpa, like a awareness and emptiness, the inseparable state of awareness and emptiness, like a milk and water, the awareness which recognizes that is wisdom of equanimity, which translates into our life 
that emptiness, which is more, uh, it's not just empty of anything, atoms or house or vase or something like that. And the most important aspect of emptiness is the emptiness of the self-grasping dangzi. So, and that each of us, we have a very unique experiences of experiences of that dangzi in our life this moment. What do you identify with? Why you feel so threat when that identity is threatened? Because you feel that is only who you are. You don't feel you are more than that. That's quite obvious. So for, for each one of us, do we have a possibility to transcend that sense of self, go beyond and go be, discover the self beyond that, which is the infinite possibility, a sense of self. Okay, so then maybe we can just, before we uh, com complete, you can go closer to if if any of you are facing challenges and something threat and difficulty this moment in your life you look at closely to that particular situation where you feel that pain and challenge and tell to yourself i am not only this i am not only this I am not only this person who is facing challenge. I am not only this who is feeling this pain. I am not only this who is feeling threat. Can you feel a little bit? some sense of uh, expansion of sense of self. Or sense of boundless sense of self. Sense of self-perfection. Sense of self-esteem, self-esteem sense of self, sense of worthiness, of fullness. A, some, some, some sense of confidence, that feeling stronger. But feeling stronger by not being only what you have been identifying with. The effect is the opposite. The pain identity perceives it not that way. Pain identity feels if I lose it, I'll become worse. The truth is when you realize this and through realize, through realization, when you let it go, you feel stronger. You feel more liberation. Okay, so I think um, uh, we are going to uh, conclude our uh, this session, and uh, so I hope you know these topics are a little bit, um, in a way, complicated topic, very important topic, a little bit more complicated topic. There's a, lo a little bit of theoretical. I'm trying to make it as much as experiential, personal. And, uh, and I hope uh, it is making some sense. I hope it's a little bit beneficial. Uh, clearly, that is my intention to uh, bring some light and support to the Cyber Sangha. And I hope this session was good. And I hope we dedicated this session to all the uh, people and who need the blessings, knowledge, experience realization of these wisdom traditions and these wisdoms 
Okay, so thank you very much. And remember again, five times informal meditation every day, at least one time formal meditation every day. And, uh, and then remember to write your feedback and particularly associated to the pain. And I think it's also very, very good that, that uh, you know, we, we are talking about med healing meditation, uh, pain through meditation, but meditation is related with the wisdom, wisdom of five wisdom, and each wisdom playing, may be playing an uh, important role, specific role. Each, each wisdom is playing a specific role in healing your pain. So that is like a little bit like a homework to reflect how, the, how that works. And at least on a personal level, you can see how, it, how that is working or not. So, so thank you very much and uh, all the best wishes. I think the internet went quite okay the last session. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye.